How many of you have been in a situation, again, where you've learned information was valuable, you're excited about it, and you didn't follow through, and it wasn't because you weren't interested, it was because you're overwhelmed. Who's been there before? Raise your hand and say, I. We want to help you to change that. The way you change that is by learning one simple skill. It's a skill you already have, but you may not be using it to its maximum ability. And tonight, rather than teach you the whole skill, let's just point it out. And the skill is called chunking. Chunking is the understanding that when you're first learning something, that something feels like many things. Case in point, you're going to learn to drive a stick shift car and you're brand new at driving a car. Who can remember this experience? And was it overwhelming, yes or no? Why? Because driving a car today for most of you is one chunk of information. I'm going to go drive. That's it. Because most of what you've done, you've got cognitive knowledge about, you repeated enough with enough emotion, you did it enough in your body, now all of those complex things happen and what you call it is just driving. But the first time you were driving, it was a lot of different activities. I can remember, they called me speed racer because I couldn't figure out how to get anything going. I got in the car, you know, okay, I accelerated, brake, got bat, watched the road, and I'm supposed to do this too? And watch the rear view mirror? No, 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 they, this ain't happening, right? Because it was overwhelming. Because what it was, was one chunk of you was figuring out how to accelerate, one part of you brake, another part of you's gotta watch the road, another one's watching the rear view mirror, another one's gotta figure out the timing of moving this in. But after a while, it just became driving. And most of you drive today, literally, on automatic pilot. Because many of you, how many have ever done this? You're driving along, and all of a sudden, your mind goes somewhere else, and all of a sudden, you go, who's been driving? <laughs> who's had that experience before? Say, I. I. Well, who's been driving is your subconscious mind, the part of you that makes your heart beat 100,000 times a day without you having to think about it even when you're sleeping. And your subconscious absorbs way more when you're in a position of total absorption like you are here, immersion, more than your conscious mind does. But what will make you confident and help you is if you can design a few triggers or a few ways to take all this math stuff and break it into the way most people learn. Most people think one, two, three, many. They get past three chunks and they get a bit overwhelmed. So we have these seven tools that we're giving you, these seven pillars. The first one we spent the morning on was this concept of taking stock and there are these five questions. That's the first pillar. Once that's in place, now we focus on the second one. Innovation and marketing, which we're gonna to touch on tomorrow, and we touch a little bit on today. Then we go to the third one. It's strategy versus tactics. It's a bit of, you know, what is this education marketing? It's all the things you're starting to learn right now that can give you a huge competitive advantage. How many agree the content you just learned could give you a huge advantage, implement it? How many would agree with that? Say I. I. When you can start to get a 10 times, 10X, 20X return for the same activity, your business changes overnight. And there's no reason why anybody here can't do it. And it doesn't matter what it is, but you do have to change your mindset. Your mindset can't be, well, you know, I want people to use my services to take care of their parents, but you haven't added the value by teaching me something I need to know about it. What happens at these hospitals or what happens in these locations to my parents if I'm not aware of it or if I'm not aware of my other choices are. You gotta engage me emotionally. It isn't just a mental tactic. It's really caring enough about your client to enter their world and have the feeling and compassion. And you don't just know this stuff, you feel this stuff. Here's chunking. Here's what's happening to many of you in life. This is your to-do list of life. Oh my God, I gotta do this, and 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 I gotta do this. Oh, and I learned that, and I gotta do this, 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 oh, I gotta do this, oh, I gotta do that, I gotta do this, I gotta do that. And what happens? Your brain goes, eh. You go into overwhelm. Because you have all these things and the brain has a difficult time taking all these individual items. But what if you could come along and you could say, you know, this one and 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 this one, these all relate to how I can increase the number of customers that I get from the same amount of activity. Okay, and what if this and this and this and this and this relate to something else that's really important to me. Let's say these are all about how I recruit the right people. Oh yeah, and what if this and this and this and this and this, all this relates for me to how I can immediately make a shift. I mean immediately make a shift in the culture of my company so I'm not the only one driving it, other people are thinking of this. 
All of a sudden, I have three things I got to focus on instead of 33 things I got to function on. How many can handle these three? You have a lot better in your mind. Say I. So I'm always looking for chunking devices, ways to take the complex and at least chunk it. Even if I don't get it, at least I can put it in the right slots. So I can go, okay, if I can remember the overall theme, then I can come back here and I can look at these individual things and figure out how to you know, implement them. So Jay Abraham's going to be here tomorrow. Jay's been a friend of mine for years. And Jay and I were talking, I don't know, 18 years ago, 19, 20 years ago. I don't know how long ago. It was a long time ago. And I was interviewing him, and I was saying most people in business, business is complex. That's why most people don't do it. And as the business becomes more successful, does it become more complex or less complex usually? Which one? More complex. But complexity can also be simplified if you learn to chunk things, if you learn to organize things. There's a lot of activity, for example, in sending an email, but today for most of us it's one chunk. It's been automated for us. Well, you can do the same thing with your business as it gets more complex. So I was saying to Jay, there's got to be a way. When we talk about all these tools for improving your business, I mean, really, there aren't that many ways to improve your business. If I wanted to improve my business and I said, look, a significant jump in most people's business would be 10 or 20%, but how many agree 33% big jump in your business? How many agree with that? Say I. How many love to have a 33% jump? Say I. I'm going to show you right now in less than 15 minutes how to do it. It's so damn simple. Because there aren't that many things you can do to grow that business. In fact, there's only three things. What if you could grow that business 250% in the same time period? Really, truly do it. How many of you in that? Say I. Great, then let's chunk it right now. If you're going to grow a business, if you're going to increase a business of any sort, if you're going to make a shift, I want to give you the equivalent of this for a moment. I'll hide this so you're not staring at it anymore. There's really only three things you do to grow a business. Think about it. The first thing you do to grow a business more than anything else is you got to get more what? Got more what? Clients. clients. Got to get more clients. Some of you used to call them customers. Many of you now think of clients. Again, as was noted earlier, customer, you might have a one-time relationship with a client. You're really trying to figure out how to meet their needs. You're looking out for them. You're trying to make sure that this is somebody you're protecting, you're caring for. If you get more clients and you're charging for your clients, are you going to increase the business? Yes or no? So that's one thing you can do, obvious. And by the way, you're going to learn a million different ways to get more clients, but that's one of those areas. What's the second thing you can do? There's only three things you can do. You can get more clients, and you can get each time somebody buys to get them to buy what? More. That's the only other thing you can really do. Get more clients or get them to buy more. Make, make an investment. It can be more money, more, more price, or a greater price per unit, if you increase the product quality, can you charge more, yes or no? Or could you have multiple products like we described to you? So when you meet their needs and there's other needs, they start going, wow, I need that too. And it's a legitimate need. You're not just selling them, you truly are meeting their needs. Can you find a way, once you have a client, to meet more of their needs if you're innovating and if you love your clients, if you care about them, if you understand them, not mentally but emotionally, how many think you could find some other needs you could truly meet for them since you're an expert? How many could do this? Say I. So if you do that, you can charge more, right? The third choice, and the only third choice to grow a business, get more clients, get more money each transaction, or get them to buy more often. Those are the only three ways to grow any business. I don't care what business you're in. That's what's so beautiful about this. Get more clients, get more income per transaction with the client, and or get the client to buy more often. And here's how you're going to do that. Open your notebook and I'll put it on the screen for you as well. Let's do a little math, real simple math. And we'll do it with a, a number that's small enough that no one needs to grab their calculator. Number one, out loud, so it's in your body. What's my first way to grow my business? Increase the number of? That's number one. Number two, increase the average what? More money per transaction. Or third, increase the what? Repurchase, or some of you might get more referrals because some of you might say, but Tony, I sell real estate, and a person doesn't buy again. You know, on average, they might not buy for four years, three years, five years. But the best realtors I know have an absolute formula where they want, for example, a 20% return on all their clients. They don't necessarily buy again. They either buy again within four years, five years, or they refer somebody who buys. Now, not everybody does that, but some people refer three people that buy. One of the guys I know makes several million bucks a year in real estate, He's been doing this for about 20 years. Because he has a formula. He has an absolute glow. I want you tonight, 
to leave with a formula for an absolute goal to grow your business by at least a third, and if you think you can do it without even being aggressive, 250%. Let's do the math. It's so damn simple. It's mind-boggling. So look right here. Let's take a number of customers. Let's say a business has, a small business, let's say it's a $200,000 little business to make it really, really simplistic, some little startup, some little company just getting going. This might be me incorporated, one person, or one or two people, but they want to do this. And they got a thousand customers. And those customers' average price of a sale each time they buy is how much? Come on, guys, how much? $100. And they repurchase usually an average of how many times over the course of that relationship? Twice. Twice in a year in this case. So that produces $200,000. So let's just do this. How many of you think that screwing up, if you took one little itty bitty tiny, you know, infinitesimal piece of these five days, you took one or two strategies, you could find a way to get 10% more clients. How many think you could do this? Let me see your hands. Anybody not think you could get 10%? If you don't now, that's okay. But at the end of five days, if you don't, now we will have your head examined, right? You're gonna have so many ways. You could apply one or two out of everything. Just apply one and you could do this. So you get 10% more clients. For this person, 10% more clients, fill in the blank. How much would that be? They got 1,000 clients, they get 10% more. How many is that? 1,100. So you're gonna get 100 more to do it. And let's say that you're only gonna increase the average price of the sale by 10%. So how much would they get per transaction now? $110, jot it down. And let's say their average repurchase in a year is per, per customer is twice in a year and we're gonna increase to 10%, so how much is that? 2.2%. Now with these small numbers, it's real easy. We add those together and guess what we end up with? $266,000. Doesn't sound like a lot of money, because most of you have $200,000 business, it's ridiculous, but I'm doing this deliberately. That is a 33.1% increase in business. Here's the formula. Increase the number of clients by 10%, Increase the transaction value by 10%. Increase repurchase or referral by 10%. You just grew your business by a third. By the way, will your profit only be a third? How much of this is going to profit? Is it going to be the same as all your other purchases or all your other sales? Yes or no? No, because you're covering most of your overhead already in your core business. So your profitability, this goes to a great significant amount to your bottom line. Who here can find a way to get 10% more for your current product or service even without much enhancement. How many think you could do it? I'm just curious. How many could do it definitely by an enhancement or by adding another service? Let me see your hands. You know you could. How many think if you worked on it and focused on really serving your customer, you're gonna buy 10% more often, 2.2 times per customer. How many think you could do that? Great, one third business growth. I want you to get how simple this is. Now, if you wanted to get a little bit more aggressive, and most of you in this room certainly should, let's take the same little business and let's say we're gonna increase the number of clients, not 10%. If you can get a 10X or 20X return on your ads, if you start using education marketing as an element, you're using market data and people start going, wow, of course I do business with you. You're not even selling them. You're just telling them the truth. You're adding value to their life. If you just took one or two or three of these strategies and you're just a little bit more aggressive, you hired some salespeople, you're in young adults, excuse me, you're in toddler, and you go hire some salespeople before you think you couldn't afford it, but now you go, you know what? I'm gonna figure out what the value of this customer is, and I'm gonna pay disproportionately for some of these people, or I'm gonna do an educational strategy like we saw, where I can give them more income. I'm gonna go hire some more salespeople. Or you're in that stage of young adulthood, and you say, you know what? We're gonna get much more efficient. I'm not gonna keep mailing to everything. I'm gonna find a more efficient way to get my clients. Whatever it is, let's say increase them by 33%. 33% would be 1,330 new clients. Let's say it took you a year to do that. And by the way, let's say we increased the value per sale by 25%. So now instead of 100, it'd be how much? Come on guys, how much? 125. And let's say we increase the repurchasing frequency by 50%, 50% more. Which by the way, if somebody loves you, they're not gonna buy 2.2 times. They probably buy three times in a year if you're really adding the value. So that's three times. Now, when you put those numbers together, what do you end up with, by the way? You end up with a $500,000 business that used to be a $200,000 business. 